أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم شهر رمضان الذي أنزل فيه القرآن هدى للناس وبينات من الهدى والفرقان All praise are due to Allah, Lord of the worlds and surely Allah is the friend and protector of the righteous and I bear witness that Allah is one and has no partners and that Muhammad the son of Abdullah is his servant and his last messenger. May Allah always, constantly, send peace and blessings to Muhammad, to his family, to his companions, and to all those who call to his way and establish his sunnah to the day of judgment. As to what follows, I begin by reflecting on the importance of taqwa, the importance of the consciousness of Allah, and that this should strengthen us, this should inform us the way, this should give light even in the time of darkness. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has revealed about this glorious month that we as human beings are involved in, that the month of Ramadan is the time in which Quran was revealed as a guidance to humanity clear evidence from the guidance and from that which separates truth from falsehood. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed us in this beautiful month in many ways. But we should never forget that the overwhelming theme of the month is not a theme of the struggle for food and drink. But it is the Quran itself that the last testament has re been revealed, that the separation between truth and falsehood has been given to humanity. The light leading to paradise has been lit. And this is a great blessing for believers and those who would understand. But this month also, along with the blessings of going into the Qur'an, the blessings of trying to understand it, to take time to stop, to go through the whole book, it also is a great blessing in the struggle that we face as human beings. Because there is a spiritual side of us, and there is an animal side. And the spiritual side is blessed with the Qur'an. The spiritual side is blessed with Salat. The spiritual side is enriched with Dua and its connection with Allah Azza wa Jal. The animal side is in a struggle in this world with other living creatures. Struggling to eat, struggling to drink, struggling to procreate, to continue their species. And Ramadan is a blessing in that it informs us to continue your life, but you must do imsak, you must abstain. You are living in the world, but not controlled by the world. And this is a great blessing for us. But in this time, this critical time, as we are entering into the second of the three parts of the month, we're in the middle third of the month, and our bodies are now getting used to the fast. We are coming into a rhythm with the fast. No eating and drinking during the day. At the night time, we open up. Now, something else has to be revealed. And we have to ask ourselves a very serious question. Why are we fasting? What is the purpose of the fast? What is our intention? There are some who fast only because it is a cultural thing to do. It's what my people do. It's what my father is doing. It's what my brother and sister are doing. There are others who are fasting in the general population. 
There are people who are fasting who are not Muslims. And that might sound strange to you, but the word, the, the, the root word of Siyam is imsak, abstain, stay away from something. There are people who stay away from food and drink and environment for medical reasons. They have allergies. And so they will, in some cases, religiously read the package to make sure that it has no nuts in it. They will stay away from the fur of dogs and cats. They will abstain from certain things to drink. And they do it in a religious sense. It is part of their way of life. There are others who do abstinence, and they're not Muslims. They do it for social reasons. They abstain from food in order to have a certain physique. And the latest fashions now that people have been uh, encouraged to wear or brainwashed to wear as a fashion of the tights, wearing tight, tight clothes. And so some people, for social reasons, will abstain for food in order to meet the needs of the fashions. And they do it religiously. There are other people who abstain for political reasons. They find themselves in a prison. They find themselves in a concentration camp. And so they abstain. They don't eat, they don't drink. And it is what they call a hunger strike. So for political reasons, in order for their message to get to the public, they stay away from food. And the leaders of the hunger strike will come to them and give them the rules of hunger strike. How you do it, how you live, how you function so you have the most amount of days in order that your message will get to the public. And they do it religiously. There are other people in great religions, as in Buddhism and other religions, who try to literally kill their ego, kill their nafs. And so they abstain to destroy their lower self. And by destroying their lower self, they feel from this they will raise higher in a spiritual sense. And so fasting means many things for different people today. And human beings around us are involved in the fast. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us very clearly in the second chapter of the Quran, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu kutiba alaykum usiyam kama kutiba ala ladheena min qablikum la'allakum tattaqun. O you who believe, fasting has been prescribed on you as it was prescribed on those who came before you in order that you would have the consciousness of Allah. So we are fasting for a spiritual reason. And this taqwa, this conscience that we develop, is a crucial part of our life. And it's something that may save us from the dangers that we are going through in the world. And in the taqwa, there are great fruits. And we need to understand it. Because if you don't understand the value of a fruit, then you will look at it. You will look at the orange and say it is a beautiful color, not realizing that inside of it is vitamin C. So you need to understand the value of the fruit. What is the fruit of taqwa? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has revealed in Surah Al-Anfal, verse 29, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, in tattaqullaha yaj'al lakum furqanan, wa yukaffir ankum sayyiatikum, wa yaghfir lakum, wallahu du fadl adhim. Allah told us, O you who believe, if you have taqwa, if you fear Allah, and God against evil, He will make for you a criterion and He will forgive you of your sins. He will release you 
of the evil around you and forgive you. And Allah is the Lord of great bounty. And so one of the fruits from the taqwa is al-furqan. That which separates truth from falsehood. So as a result of our fast, taqwa rises, furqan comes into us. Imam al-Shawkani rahimahullah and many great ulama showed us that this furqan can give us tabat al-qulub wa quwwat al-basaiya wa husn al-hidayah. It can give us a strengthening of the hearts. Insight, quwwat al-basaiya, the strength of sight, insight into affairs and the best guidance. And this is so critical now, the battle qulub, when we find ourselves being surrounded by evil in some of the most peaceful places where you would never expect violence to come against Muslims. It is happening today. In Sri Lanka itself, a place where Muslims had enjoyed a freedom and peace, now they are surrounded. The masjids are closed. And they have to break their fast secretly in their homes. Even in this part of the world, in the United States, with the dangerous states of Florida and Texas, Arizona, the place where the racists live, you expect a reaction in Connecticut, one of the safest places in America, the masjid, the Dianat Masjid, has been burnt down last week in the month of Ramadan. And it is definitely recognized it was not a mistake, it was an arson attack on the masjid. And so Muslims recognize that the struggle is real. This is a wake-up call for us. It's not that the struggle did not exist. The evil one is real and the struggle around us is real. Secondly, Allah told us He will give us quwwat al-basair. The furqan will give us insight into what is happening. These attacks on Islam and Muslims are not by chance. It is because we are doing something right. It is because we represent the alternative to the interest and banking system. We recognize the alter we, we, we are, uh, are the alternative to the destruction of the family. We are the alternative to racism. The alternative to the destruction of the environment. And so what is happening is not by chance, it is by design. But as they plan, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala plans. The third point, husn al-hidayah. That this furqan, the ability to see, to separate truth from falsehood, can give us a guidance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make the right choices. We have to begin to make the right choices. And that is not just in a political sense, even in a personal sense. Because a true fasting person, and now is when we need to try to get to the real fast. We have struggled with food and drink. Now we need the real fast. A true fasting person has nearness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He stays away from food and drink. She is involved in the fast personally for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And because of this personal relationship, it gains nearness to Allah Azza wa Jal. It makes us more sincere because every day when that iftar comes and you recognize that you fasted the whole day 
It teaches you sincerity to Allah. That you intended to do it for Allah and you completed it. And if that continues for 29 or 30 days, then that sincerity needs to be part of our life. That we become sincere to Allah in everything that He has commanded. The true fasting person should be gaining self-control. Controlling of the self. Controlling of desires. And when that control of the desires is there, you're living in the world, but you're not of the world. You're in school, they're studying, you're fasting. You're at work, they are moving, you're fasting. You're walking down the street, you're downtown, you're fasting. This gives you an insight. This gives you a type of control that you can live in the world and not be controlled by it. So when the advertisements come to pull you in one direction or another, we have self-control. And this is going to be so critical for Muslims, so critical as we continue through this month. It also helped us in our fears. We feared fasting in this time of the year. Our friends and colleagues thought that we were insane. How can you not eat and drink? And they said, can't you even drink a little bit? Can't you drink a little bit? We said no. Ramadan helped us with our fear. We can do it. And the same way we can do it in Ramadan, we can do it in the rest of the year. This month also helped us to cultivate good manners. And if we have not done it up until now, try to think about yourself as a fasting person. Not just a fasting person that you're not going to drink, you're not going to eat, but you're not going to swear. You're not going to curse people. Manners will change. And this is so critical and we see it even here in our masjid, which is a microcosm of the world, that people are under a test. The line is, is very heavy. Your brother and sister is in front of you. How do you relate to them? Just a little bit of goodness, a little bit of good character, saying the right thing, doing the right thing, can begin to change our whole being in this world. So Ramadan, helps us to cultivate character. And the Prophet ﷺ has told us, Verily, I have been sent to complete the best in character. That the essence of this message is the Tawheed, the character, the Akhirah. This is the essence of the message. And so by doing this, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blesses us to go to another stage. And this is the stage that we need to reach, the level where our limbs are fasting. And especially I want to focus this month on the tongue, on the mouth. What is coming out of our mouth? Can we control our mouth after iftar? Can we control our addictions after iftar? If we can, then a change is coming about in us. And that is a great benefit of this month. But the highest level is to question our hearts, to question our very self and the diseases that hit the heart, the disease of pride, being proud of my language, proud of my color, proud of my nationality. All of this means nothing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We are not just human beings of different colors. In reality, we are all arwah. We are all souls. And in 70 years or so, 80 years for some young people here maybe, none of us will be above the earth. Our bodies will be gone. 
What remains? It's the soul. It's that force inside of us. This is what the real person is. All of us are, are arwah. So we have to question ourselves. Jealousy. Why am I jealous of another individual? Am I jealous because of wealth? Because of something physical? That wealth is not going to stay. That physical thing is not going to stay. Then why am I jealous? Kathratul ghadab. Anger. Why am I angry? And when the man came to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he gave me advice, he told him, La don't get angry. And so maybe we feel angry after Asa, as we're moving toward Maghrib and we're hungry. But this is a test. Question yourself. And by questioning the self, then maybe we can raise to the highest level of the soul. And that is where we have nearness to Allah and we identify with other Muslims and other human beings. We identify with the destruction of the environment. We identify even with an animal whose leg is broken. That animal is a creature of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When we can reach that stage, then the fasting is now on its highest level and we are gaining the true benefit out of this sacred month. It is a beautiful opportunity for us. Let us move into this third, this second of the th three parts of the month and strengthen ourselves for the last part of the month. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept all of our struggles, our prayers, our fasting. May Allah accept the charity, even those who are not fasting and are sick or are traveling. May Allah accept them also for the Quran that they are reading, for the prayers that they are making, for the charity that they are giving. May Allah accept all of us. May Allah make it easy for the Muslims in Sri Lanka, easy for the Muslims in China, in Philistine. May Allah make it easy for the Muslims in the Central African Republic in all of the areas where we are under great pressure. May Allah ease this pressure and bring a balanced leader to the Muslim world. May Allah bring this balanced leadership to our nations and help us to be with that leader. And that our last word would be kalima la ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullahi wa lakum wa li sa'ili muslimin min kulli dhambin istaghfiru innahu huwal ghafur rahim. Alhamdulillah, al wahid al ahad al fard al samad al ladhi lam yalid wa lam yulad wa lam yakul lahu kufuwan ahad wa usalli wa usallam ala sayyid al awwalin wa al akhirin nabiyyana muhammadin wa ala alihi wa ashabi ajma'in fa ya ibadullah ittakullah haythu ma kuntum wa yukul al haq subhana mukhbiran wa amira inna allah wa malaikatahu yusalluna ala al nabi ya ayuhal ladhina amanu Sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima. Allahumma salli wa sallam ala abdika wa rasulika Muhammad wa ala alihi wa ashabi ajma'in. Wardu Allah wa ala al-khulafa al-rashidin Abu Bakr, Umar, Uthman wa Ali wa anna bi rahmatik ya arhamar rahimin. Alhamdulillah alladhi hadana li hadha wa ma kunna li nahtadiya lawla an hadana Allah. Rabbana la tuzi kulubana ba'da idh hadaytana وهب لنا من لدنك رحمة إنك أنت الوهاب اللهم أعز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم أعز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم أعز الإسلام والمسلمين ربنا تقبل منا إنك أنت السميع العليم وتب علينا إنك أنت التواب الرحيم ربنا تقبل قيامنا وصيامنا ربنا تقبل قيامنا وصيامنا ربنا تقبل قيامنا وصيامنا وأعمالنا كلها في شهر رمضان لا إله إلا أنت سبحانك إنا كنا من الظالمين لا إله إلا أنت سبحانك إنا كنا من الظالمين